This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to Essentially Jacob, the Perfume Shrine YouTube channel. Today we're going to be reviewing Joyeuse Tuberose, the Joyous Tuberose by none other than Guerlain. I butchered the pronunciation of Joyeuse Tuberose, but subscribe to my channel here on the tubes before we get to it. You can also follow me on my main Super Jacob channel where I live stream these videos where I do the reviews live in front of a virtual audience. In fact, I have my wonderful co-reviewers right now with me in the chats. Hello, everybody. Hello, chat to the sidebar. Let's co review it together. So, I did get a sample from my sales associate at the Guerlain counter. This was right before they took away all of the older bottles and right before they introduced the newer, more expensive ones. So, I do have a hold on before I zoom it in two milliliter. It is a two milliliter. Let me just find the right angle so that it reflects the light. Ah, there it is. And this is how the little two milliliter vial looks like. Okie dokie. So that's that. 2 ml eau de parfum. Here, this hand is free. <laughs> Let me find it. Lavish me. <laughs> I'm already loving it. <laughs> oh. I don't know. There's something about tuberose in winter and colder months. There's just something about it when it's kind of colder outside that makes especially Guerlain tuberoses that are a little bit more vanillic. It, it just, it works. Let me tell you. Okay, so it came out in 2017, right? Uh, the note, so 2017, branded as a unisex fragrance by Guerlain. Two noses behind it. Delphine Yelk or Jelk. I think it's Delphine Yelk, a lady. And uh, Thierry Vasser, the, the dude himself. Oh, okay. So we got tuberose, lily. Uh, sorry, green notes are in the top notes. Then the mid notes are tuberose, lily, jasmine, sambac. Vanilla, sandalwood, and vetiver. Of course we have van vanilla. It is It is the Guerlain vanilla, the Guerlain sandalwood, the Guerlain vetiver. Jasmine sambac is a night-blooming jasmine, less indolic than the, than the Yasminum grandiflorum, which, we, which blooms in the early morning in the day, which has much more indole, so it's more poopy. It can go more poopy. Lily... <clears throat> Lily can can smell of death, <laughs> a funeral home very much the sickly sweet smell of death, and then, and then the tuberose, which in this case it's kind of one of the lighter tuberoses, I've ever smelled. Ah, uh, okay, so uh, je use tuberose. It is a joyous tuberose. It really is, as cringy as it sounds. It has that it, happiness. It's just a boost of fun vibes. You know, tuberose is usually dangerous. You know, we have here the version, a little bit dusty, because this one's been laying around for a week now before I actually, <laughs> here it is. Poor little creature. My little night vampire. Tuberose can go, you know, Serge Luton, uh, tuberose criminel. Okay, this guy, this is a... <laughs> <laughs> salicylic indoles <laughs> blasting through you like you smell this uh, tuberose and then you smell this one and this one you don't even smell it anymore because this one just like killed everything else so like there's tuberose and tuberose there's ways and ways of interpreting tuberose and usually perfumers like to envision a tuberose smell as something narcotic in a way alluring, seducing, seductive, dangerous, sexual, hypersensual, like taking you to that place where you get to talk about history and how the ladies in past centuries weren't even allowed if they were virgins to pass by the blooming tuberoses because it was said that the tuberose would in 
induce that state of sexuality, they would lose their virginity. Like there's that whole mystery behind tuberose that is usually what, you know, uh, Dominique Ropion's um, Frederick Mal range carnal flower, the tuberose, one of the most majestic tuberoses out there, the perfume is called carnal flower. So there is obviously, and here it's criminal tuberose, so poison, Christian Dior's poison is, is a tuberose-based fragrance. So you see, tuberose is usually given uh, that context or utilized within a context of sexuality, carnal pleasures, desires, losing control, the senses, you know, all that stuff. And and then amidst all of that, you get this Les Exclusives type of version of Guerlain fragrances, their exclusive range. And they're like, okay, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to do a totally different take on tuberose. We're going to make tuberose the opposite of dangerous. We're going to make tuberose the opposite of carnal. We're going to make her innocent. We're going to show that virgin girl that actually she can smell a tuberose and she's not going to uh, go all crazy and nuts. And we're going to show the joyous facet of tuberose. And yes, if you are looking for a niche price, because you know that the Guerlain's niche range of these fragrances, they they cost a lot. They, they cost a pretty penny. So if you if you want them, you might think, I expected something more with a punch. So, like, you get that with Tuberose Criminelle. You get a punch from Serge Luton's Tuberose Criminelle. But with this one, you might think, oh, I spent all that money, but this is like, meh, you know, it's weak. And yeah, uh, you could see it that way, but it's also quite rare to find such a tame Tuberose. And there's something so elegant about not overpowering you with something. There's something so elegant about mastering the art of toning it down, because that is an art as well. You might think it's so easy to make something so simply simple or simply s smelling of, of, of a simple composition, but it's not that simple. It actually takes a lot of masterful work to create simplicity and the simpler and the more effortless things are and the more elegant they are as well. Coco Chanel was a master at that when it came to her clothing. She would strip the clothing more and more down to the essential bare minimum. And once that garment was stripped to the, yes, to the essential bare minimum, only then was the garment truly an elegant Chanel piece. This goes very close to, uh, go very close. Let, let us... Smell it a little bit more as it develops on my skin. It's a very, very elegant, minimal tuberose. The jasmine <clears throat> combined with the tuberose and then the, veti the vetiver is imperceptible here. It's, it's about vanilla, sandalwood, and tuberose and jasmine to me. Um, what else do they put there? Uh, lily. Lily here adds that, you know, the, the sweet, sickly smell of death that we smell from the lily of the valley. Not the, sorry, my apologies, not lily of the valley, just lily. Um, lily of the valley, totally different smell. Uh, that sickly, sweet smell of lily, but combined with classic lily smell, is not here. It's as if they extrapolated the sweetness of the lily, added a little bit of vanilla to it, covered up the tuberose with it, added the jasmine sandback on top and you really get a pleasant joyous slightly green because in fact the top notes are green notes and you do get that green aspect of tuberose in here as well but it's more milky it's it's a it's it's balsam. It's like a balsamic type of milky garmombosia type of ambrosial, not garmombosia, that's Twin Peaks. It's an ambrosial type of floral tuberose. Let me...
I've been going crazy for this one lately. Um, oh, this one also hits the spot as of late. Uh, Quelques Fleurs by Ubigan. Um, it's kind of a similar take, although this one, whole other realm. But there's an ambrosial quality to this one. It's a bit colder. It's a more cool floral. But they are quite different, but similar in the aspect of the ambrosia. And very fascinating to me to have a tuberose-based uh, uh, scent or fragrance go ambrosial. And this is because of the sandalwood. And this is also because of... Um, What was the other thing I wanted to say? Because of the vanilla. But also very fascinating how the sandalwood in this one is quite similar to samsara. Hold on, why is this so dusty? Damn it. Such a mess. There it is. Oh, yeah. Of course, there's less of that sandalwood note here. Here we have more of a floral touch to it, but it is a very similar sandalwood accord in the two. Albeit much more toned down here, the sandalwood is just there to enhance a, a certain nuance of sweetness because sandalwood has a sweetness to it. There's a certain sweet nuance to, to the sandalwood that utilized here. They extrapolated just a couple of nuances of sweetness of vanilla and put it in there. And that sweetness of the of the lily. And then on top of that, we have that tuberose, which usually is dangerous and carnal and what have you. But because of all of those different facets of sweetness added to it, it's as if they like keep pecking. They pecking, they keep pecking at the tuberose and they they make the tuberose vibrate in a sweet way instead of making it vibrate in that salicylic, indolic way of this one or um, that other uh, more um, melon with camphorous added notes of the carnal flower tuberose. It's very pleasant, very pleasant, very wearable. Now we get to that nasty part, which is, well, is it worth the money? Mm. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure if it's worth the money because what do you want your tuberose to smell like? I'm happy that there's a tuberose out there that smells different from kind of that carnal version of tuberose. But if I wanted an innocent type of warm, inviting, joyous fragrance, chances are I can get one cheaper that does the job just as well. It stays very close to the skin. It doesn't project much. Very delicate, very subtle. I don't think that this one is going to last many hours. It's not going to be something that's going to like stick with you for 10 hours. I think four hours tops. Three to four hours tops. It's very delicate, very delicate. It's beautiful, but do you want to spend that money, that new price range that Guerlain has given to their new bottles? I don't like their new bottles for these perfumes, to be honest with you. I think Samsara is still much better. Even in, I mean, I, I have the older version, but even in its current formulation, which is much more, you know, weakened down, is still better. Um, so I don't think it's worth the money. But it is a joyous affair, definitely. It it does make you happy, but it it's not. It doesn't go in depth like the perfumes. I'm. I'm. I'm listen, this one is much deeper. Oh, quelques fleurs. That extra little added banana, ban banana, banana, banana. <laughs> Let's call the whole thing off. In here, just elevates it to that extra ambrosial oh this is just divine and i just sprayed this the other day at noon the next day at noon it was still i could still smell it on my arm it was insane um th so 
for much cheaper, you get, and this is a current formulation. It's not even like old, you know, some 20 years old version of it. No, this is the current formulation uh, that is made by, what are they called? Some Monaco, Loft Monaco. They they own Ubigan now and they, they produce Ubigan fragrances. So, um, oh man. <laughs> Je use tuberose is beautiful, it's innocent, which is already amazing. Tuberose is always described as everything but innocent. And yet here comes Guerlain telling us, well, we're going to make an innocent version of it. There you have it, because we can, because we're masters at our craft. And they deliver. It is a innocent, beautiful, clean tuberose, but what journey does it take us on? Well... You know that Thierry Vasser is the perfumer of Dior's Addict. And there's a very similar green note in this one and in Addict. There's a similarity between the two, except Addict is much more opulent, intense, deep, and just oh, an amazing perfume and cheaper than this. This one does smell almost more raw and um, <clears throat> natural in many ways. Addict is more synthetic. It is a mass released fragrance after all. Addict. But there's that similar green note with a with that balmy ambrosial touch that thanks to the Queen of the Night, an addict becomes added with the vanilla becomes this opulent, resinousy, cloying beauty, right? Also, Sambuk is in that one as well. So we have Night Blooming, Sirius, and Jasmine in Addict. And here we just got the Jasmine Sambuk. But the same perfumer made both. There are Addict vibes in here. Very fascinating how... And of course, it came out almost, what, it's eight years after. Or no, more. Uh... 15, 17 to 15 years after Addict came out, uh, Joyeuse Tuberose. It's an interesting, um, it's, a, it's an interesting composition. It does feel like um, a little bit of a Frankenstein. <laughs> and now I'm like, oh, it's so innocent. And now it's like Frankenstein. Uh, because I do have that samsara vibes going on with the sandalwood. I do have that ambrosial vibe going on in Cacafleur. And then I do have that green mix with vanilla that I have going on in Addict. So it's it's kind of like pieced together from all of these other fragrances into one. Hmm, very fascinating. Tuberose, t Brockstar in the live chat says, Tuberose fascinates me. Fraca mm, is the only fragrance that seems to always escape me somehow. I have wanted to try it for years. Fraca, mm, it's a bubblegummy tuberose, uh, a dangerous dark one. Also, um, very different from tuberose criminel, but um, there's a sadness to tuberose, to Fraca. It's... Uh, In my review, I do say that it's like a femme fatale from the noir film era. But there's a sadness to it. It's almost suicidal in a way. It's like a perfume that's, that is aware of its own end. It's very fascinating. It's a, it's a very poetic version of a tuberose. But this one, something else. Jizza says, it gets super sickly sweet and overpowering in the dry down. Don't let the opening fool you, says Jizza. Okay, well, we're waiting. We're waiting for it. With age, the tuberose has become much more prominent in, in Gabrielle. Really, Debbie? Well, tuberose is one of the main ingredients of Chanel's Gabrielle, especially in the Essence version. Um, they have kind of amped the tuberose in it, more essence of tuberose in it, and uh, but they all use all those kind of particular the illuminating flowers as they call them but 
I think uh, Gabriel's Essence version of Tuberose is also not what this is. This is more innocent. <laughs> Jackie says, uh, hats off to you for live streaming all day. Such a champ. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is like the 10th video I'm filming today. Anna, Anna uh, Rodnarine, how you doing, sweetie? Anna says, Samsara, my ultimate favorite. Please try the vintage Pure Parfum. It is magical. The transparent bottle, the red bottle is already reformulated. I'm I, Jesus. I'm not getting the sickly sweet yet. Maybe it needs some more time, but it's not that strong. Um, I feel like it needs to be stronger for it to develop into something sickly sweet because there's not enough substance there for it to go in that direction. But if it did go in that direction, it's probably due to uh, the vanilla and the sandalwood in the base notes. I get they become, I guess they might become more prominent with time. I mean, there's vetiver there as well. I wonder how the vetiver plays into this composition. If anything, I want to say there's a hint of patchouli in there, but vetiver? Oh, Brockstar says, Stevie Nicks uh, uh, supposedly smells of fraca. Courtney Love also is said to adore it. Uh, I've heard of Courtney Love, not of Stevie Nicks, but good to know because I love Stevie Nicks. And uh, it is also said that Madonna used to uh, use fraca in the past. Jizzes says that green sugar vanilla combo smells sickly to me. Makes me want to scrub it off immediately. Huh. Green sugar vanilla combo. No, yeah, on me, it, it, it it's almost, it's super close to the skin. Very, very simple, very minimally structured. It, it, it just, it's very pleasant, you know? It's very pleasant and... Uh, and tamed. There's nothing sickly about it. it. It is green and there is the vanilla. The tuberose is hiding in there. It's not really showing itself. You know, it's more like really tamed, joyous, the joyous version of tuberose. I mean, they manage something here, but I would have to perhaps use it more in warm weather as well. Maybe it would blossom in a different way because as I said, it, um, tuberose in winter works well for me, especially because I like those heavy tuberoses that are more in the carnal direction. So in in summer heat, they, they become bombastic. In, in winter, they become more crystalline. It's like you manage to actually enjoy those dangerous tuberoses uh, in winter times, because you kind of look at them, they kind of compact themselves into this amber crystal, uh, and you can enjoy their beauty. You can see them fully in, in one spot, while in summer, they kind of expand and they're all over the place. So you never get to see the full picture of that tuberose in summer. You get to kind of envision particles of it as it's kind of running through you, uh, while in winter, it kind of compacts itself. So you get to kind of really... Uh, just like going to a museum and sitting in front of a painting and seeing the whole picture all at once, while in summer you actually end up jumping into that painting and you're living inside of that landscape, so you never get to see the picture from the outside. And that's what happens with tuberose, with strong tuberoses uh, in winter, to me, as opposed to summer. So, so because this one is already so compact, I wonder what sort of reaction I would get to this in, in summertime when this would kind of bloom more. I wonder if it would bloom more. This is a, I think it would, I think it would. It is very floral and maybe the green aspect would also get more enhanced in summer than it is now. It's present, the green aspect is there, even though already the sandalwood is kicking through, the vanilla is kicking through big time. The green notes are still fighting there, they're still present, you still feel that 
that green grass is there. Uh, and it's this kind of green grass meadow, very spring-like. But the, the soil you're walking on is, it's not firm and solid. It's not dry. It's wet. And maybe that because that soil is wet, that's the vetiver. Yeah, maybe that's the vetiver giving that wetness, that feel of wet. So you're walking, you're barefoot in this field and your feet stick to that. It's not mud. It's almost the consistency of mud underneath your feet. But the grass is very green. It's not that high. It's like this this high, the grass. So you're walking through it. The grass is caressing your, your barefoot, right? So it's caressing your ankles. And um, as you're walking, you kind of stick to the ground. It's, it's slightly mushy, but not muddy. You're not all dirty and wet. You, it's just sticky enough. So as you're walking through this field, you have the notion of green, and that sticky is almost like... Um, it's a sandalwood honey type of smell. It sticks to you while you get the hints of, of green. And and you're asking yourself, well, where's the tuberose here? There's It's just green all over, all around me. The, the floor through the pressure of my feet emanates a certain sweet smell. But where is the tuberose? And then you realize when you look up, you're like, oh, there is no blue sky. It's a white sky. I am inside a tuberose. <laughs> it's like the white petals. It's like super white all around me. So you can envision that this landscape you're in, uh, you're covered up by this dome of this white tuberose. And inside of the dome is this field of this fresh, fresh, wet grass and that slightly sticky soil that is not muddy or dirty, but just sticky. So every time you lift your foot, you feel it detach from the ground and then attach itself to the ground as you're walking through the field. It's a wonderful feeling. It's like a very specific type of cocoon type of feel. Oh my God, I'm selling it to myself now. <laughs> like now I want it. <laughs> I want to walk through that field more. Oh. Mm. Debbie says, yes, warm weather. Warm weather makes all tuberose smell nauseating. To me now. Um, carnal flower in the summer. Oh my God. I love it to bits though. I gotta say. I'm, it's not overpowering. I mean it is, but in the best of ways. Carnal flower in summer. Oof. Debbie says, I love that analogy. It's a beautiful visual that it just gave me. It gave me this white dome. And you and you know, and you know what the beauty of it is? That tuberose, because there's light, there's no darkness. It is completely light inside of that white space we're in. But you don't see the sun anywhere. And this is the beauty of it. That tuberose functions as a protection shield against the sun. So the sun hits onto the, the white tuberose dome. And the white tuberose dome functions as a diffuser of the light, but also as a filter of the light. So it diffuses the light everywhere in the same way. So the beauty of this place we're in is that there are no shadows. It's a completely diffused light. And that white dome of the tuberose, that membrane of the petals of this tuberose, they filter the light through while diffusing it so that you have the feeling everywhere you look, it's the same amount of light. It's perfectly lit. This space is perfectly lit. That this high grass is just the right amount. It's not, it's not dry. It's green. It's perfectly green from the bottom to the tip. There is no fading. There is no yellowing of the grass. It's healthy. It's a healthy green corpulent, meaty, fleshy grass. And then you have that soil that is slightly sticky, but not dirty, not muddy, just wet enough for you to feel yourself attaching to it as you're walking barefoot through it. And that beautiful light is every, it's almost like floating, except you are walking through this meadow.
Oh, I think I'm going to need to buy a bottle. <laughs> hmm. Oh, man, you guys, why do I do this to myself? Oh, Dragon Boss says, Jacob, this journey you're taking us through, thank you. Oh, thank you guys for coming with me. Damn, this is good. Oof. Why did they have to, you know, repackage them in bigger bottles and make them cost more? Oh, man. Okay. Verdict. Um... It's interesting. I've, it's obviously, as we've seen from the comments, it's not for everyone. You have to try not, definitely not a blind uh, purchase. Um, try it on your skin. Feel it. Feel how it works for you. Does it, does it deliver that vision or does it not? Um, in cold weather, that's the vision it delivers. I wonder if in summer... That white dome would fall more apart and the sun rays would filter through and heat up that grass and that soil and then the soil would start fuming more. I wonder if in summer it would all kind of start combusting a bit more because of the heat. Uh, I don't know. Right now it's a crystalline vision. It's a very crystalline, beautiful dome vision. And it's wonderful to float in that environment. It It almost feels like... One of those Takashi Murakami uh, animes uh, that he did for Louis Vuitton, like Nose World, or what was it called? I think Nose World, you know, with the panda and the onion head and everything. is, And the little girl is like floating through this white world. There's always this white background with kind of colors flashing here and there. But there's always this flowing through. The psychedelic stuff is always on the sides, but the main dome is always this kind of very well-filtered... Um, diffused light everywhere and, and and the girl is kind of floating in that space it kind of has that similar vibe interesting that the color wise we do have that green grass which immediately associates with green but it's not a very green perfume it has the green aspect but there's also a bit of rose not the smell of rose the color rose like a powdery hue but it's a rose that kind of is fading towards yellow, which is the vanilla. But it definitely delivers a milky aspect of tuberose, which is very rare. It's kind of very rare to smell a milky version of a tuberose. Kind of living for it. I mean, I'm going to enjoy this little sample. And then let's see. Let's see how it grows on me. You know, I mean, it might warrant a full purchase. Uh, if it does, you'll be the first to know because I'm going to post it here. But other than that... I got two milliliters to play with and see how it grow, you know, how it goes. Maybe I'm going to wait till days get a little bit warmer. Well, we're just hitting winter now, so I'm going to have to wait quite a while. But time flies so fast, you guys. I mean, it's just like yesterday. I thought I have the feeling like oh, it was January. Now it's December and I'm like, oh, wait, the year's over already. How did that happen? So I'm like, I'm like thinking, oh, gosh, waiting until April, May. Oh, that's going to be a long time. I'm like, no, it's not. It's going to be May tomorrow, you know, so. It's good to give things time. Don't push yourself. Don't fall for the FOMO, the fear of missing out. If you need more time to, you know, live with a fragrance, then take the time. It's okay. It's going to be there even in a couple of months. So this is one of the best examples I have for this is with um, Le Lion de Chanel, which when I first got it, I was a bit skeptical about it. It took me like almost a year. And then all of a sudden, boom, I was like, oh, I got get it and now i am head over heels in love with it so much so that i purchased several backup bottles of the the batch code that i love which is 5001 um sometimes it just takes time with perfumes and it's okay to give yourself that time perfumes are not just about the longevity and i in fact tend to avoid the discourse of longevity and silage. I know a lot of you ask me in the comments always like, why didn't you mention the longevity and silage? So I tried to force myself to remember to have to say it. Because in reality, it's not so important to me. 
the lifespan of a perfume lives through my mood swings, but also the temperature I'm in and whatever cultural situation I'm in. So sometimes perfumes need a lot of time for me to really understand them or really be able to say, oh yeah, this, this is great or this is not great. So the longevity of a perfume for me is not given merely by the fact that, oh, you spray it on your skin and then 10 hours later it's gone. Longevity for me is something way more complex when it comes to perfumes. Longevity to me means how does it work in the span of a year or two years? Like longevity, we're talking long stuff. How does it react to time change, to, to weather change, to mood change, hormonal balances? That to me, when I kind of put all those bits together, that gives me the longevity of a perfume because it's longevity... Uh, within my life and my needs and my moods. Uh, and that has nothing to do with just how long does it last on your skin? Like, what is that? You know what I mean? We're not in kindergarten. Um, it's beautiful. And you know what? Very fascinating. <laughs> As it's drying down, it has a similar nuance to uh, Dior's new look, but better, <laughs> like more Guerlain, you know, Dior's new look is more Demachy Dior, and, and this is kind of like new look, but the Guerlain version of it. Does anybody else agree in the chats? Has anybody smelled both of them? J Jane says, yes, I agree. Le Leon needs time. It's a story. It definitely is a story. Uh, MC, MC says, uh, Louis Vuitton contre moi. You have to try it one day. I have tried it. I, I think I reviewed it even like a couple of years ago. Anna says, I'm waiting for the Les Exclusives of the Toilettes to come back. Forget about it. It ain't going to happen. Perhaps as a limited edition for anniversaries, etc. I wonder how Le Lyon would smell in the other toilet version, though. No, I think Le Lyon is fine the way it is. It was made as an eau de parfum and let them, you know, let them keep it that way. Uh, oh, A1H says, I want Jacob to tell me fairy tales now. Oh, thank you. Mm, um, it's, it gives me new look vibes, Dior's new look vibes. But this one is, um, slightly more acidic. If, if you compare it to, to new look, new look is more, it's, it's more pH neutral in the smell, and this one is more acidic. There's a heaviness to this one that is not in um, New Look. However, they're different perfumes. I mean, I'm not saying, oh, this is like the... But they have kind of something similar going on in the way they interpret this white floral aspect. Uh, Jane asks, how do we request a certain batch, Jacob? Is that something we could request in the Chanel Beauty Store? No. You can, if you go to the beauty boutique and you ask the sales associate, hey, I would like Le Lyon, please, uh, could you check your batches? I would like batch 5001 or smaller number than that or higher than that. And then they're going to turn uh, the boxes upside down underneath is the batch code. And they, they're going to look for you. But usually my beauty boutique never until now managed to order by batch codes. They say, oh, Jacob, yeah, we'll try, but it never, you know, I, I, they never managed to call another boutique in another city, another country and be like, hey, do you have that bad? Go look into your stock, look through the batch codes. They don't have time for that, really. So when you enter your beauty boutique, you can definitely ask yourself, so say, hey, please, I want Le Lyon batch code this or lower, this or higher. Could you please check? Then they're going to, they only have a couple of bottles anyway. It's not like they have many of these bottles. This is not a mass produced product, you guys. You're never going to see in the beauty boutiques a mass quantity of these. And they're often sold out, by the way. So, in fact, I bought my batches. Then I went like a week later. I was like, maybe I want one more. And they said, oh, sorry, they're gone. I'm like, wow, they sold out already? Yeah, gone. 
Uh, and since then, it's been a month or two. They haven't gotten them back yet. So anyway, you guys, that was my review of um, Joyeuse Tubereuse by Guerlain. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And thumb up this video if you liked it thus far. Thank you so much for the super chat, Jackie. Seven Australian dollars and 99 cents. Super Thank chat so from much, Jackie. Sweetie. Purple heart from Australia. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Well... Thank you so much for the super chat. What a wonderful way to end the review. And you shall forever be mortalized in this video with that super chat. Way to go. Clever. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Thank you for the review. I find it super useful, says Jane. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Jane. Yeah. Has anybody smelled? Nobody in the chats um, has a comparison uh, between uh, Joyeuse Tubereuse and... Um, new look. Dixie says, I went in a boutique and asked for a bottle. First they said they didn't have it, then he went in the back and got a bottle. It can happen. I mean, sometimes they're not aware. I, the same happened to me. I actually uh, called and I wrote my sales associate of the beauty boutique, who's also the store manager. Love her to bits. The sweetest, 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 sweetest person in the world. And she said, and I said, hey, do you got Lillian in that bash card? She said, oh, sorry, Jacob, we don't. And I was super sad. But I was like, oh, well, I missed it. You know, it's a year old. I get it. And then a couple of days later, I go to, to the beauty boutique because I was in that area anyway. And I enter and another sales associate was there. Opened the And I said, do you have Lillian? She looks. She says, oh, yeah, we have here i'm like okay batch code this is that she looks she's like oh, yeah we have the batch code you want i was like really just two days ago you didn't have it. she's like oh we just got them in today so things change on a quick quickly and and things can move you got to keep asking and um just be patient you know uh, and sometimes they're also people are overworked and sometimes they got to work so much and they skip a lunch and they don't have time for that and they're just under overworked and undernourished and sometimes dehydrated which actually let me take a sip of water get the merch by the way super Jacob glasses and the holiday merch by the way let me plug it in at the end of the video at least Ooh, the snow globe the holiday season snow globe with the crop <laughs> <laughs> holiday bush for y'all thank you guys so much for watching oh get the merch at www.superdacob.com or in my amazon store links provided in the description box down below thank you guys so much for watching and until next time never forget to never give up on perfume love love you all see you soon take care bye Mwah.